Okay, today I'm going to do a quick video about uh, extending my water line down to this pole down here that's by the garden. Uh, you can see I like to water with cans by hand and um, it used to end up in the garden and over the last couple of days between the rain and the heat stuff I dug down from where it started. You can see the weeds are really taking off. But it used to be way up here originally when I installed it because I didn't have the raised bed. So now that I've got the raised bed area, um, you know, I'm running it down there. So I did dig the ditch. It's about six to eight inches deep. I don't bury it very deep. This is just like a temporary seasonal line. So um, I have to blow it out each winter. And let's take a walk up and I'll show you where it starts. Basically, the pipe is buried. It's, uh, I think 125 foot of pipe buried up here from the house. the house. If you look down there, you can see there's, this is where the pipe starts. Actually, it um, goes out underground from there and there's just a piece of hose running up and along. that's just kind of hidden behind the mulch and stuff. And I just hook it up to the tap up here and I only turn the water on when I'm down there watering. So this is really easy to just disconnect and um, blow out in the winter time so nothing freezes and cracks. And you can pretty much see it's a long way down to the garden so that's why I, you know kind of ran this down there temporary just to make it easier to water. So let's go down there and get going. Right, so pretty much you can see I moved that pole down that was up in the other garden. And now coming up out of the ground I actually made this up. I kind of I soldered this up because it just took too long to you know put in a video but there's a tap up there for filling water cans there's one down there for the hose and then there's a plug on the end to either extend it or for when I drain it in the winter and blow it out and then I just put a fitting on to hook to the hose now the tubing that I'm using is it's kind of it's a black tubing from uh, Really cheap black tubing from Home Depot. It's a three quarter by a hundred foot. Uh, this is the 100 PSI rated. I only have 60 max from my well, so this works good. As long as you keep it out of the sunshine, it'll last. So I picked up that roll of pipe at home. I think it was about $28 for the whole roll, and I only need a part of it. And I just don't want to tell you what that little piece of copper tubing there costs. It's ridiculous these days. But anyhow, let's get now, going. These rolls of tubing are, are really very stiff, so you're going to want to do this on a warm day, to tell you the truth. Um, not something you want to do when it's cold out, because it won't unroll up and up when it's warm out. I'm just going to start that. And then I'm going to put the end on here. Uh, let's see, I like to cut a little bit off the end just to make sure it's round and everything. I got one of these PVC cutters. They're just cheap. You can get them anywhere and they work really good. And let's see, I'm going to put two hose clamps on there. And this is a fitting that's made for the hose. And then I'm going to just slide up to give it. Make sure to seat it all the way. And I don't know, you know, I don't, they don't say to do this, but I, what I like to do is to just heat it a little bit before you tighten the clamps. And that way you seem to get less leaks. And I always put two clamps on these fittings. So this will be the end down here that goes down here and then I'll just put a union up above where I tie into the old pipe. So now you can pretty much see I've got got this all on here and all I'm going to do is bring it up to the post. And it's a little stiff fighting that tubing but I pretty much drilled all these holes and stuff beforehand because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have it come up like the post, come up the post like that. So I'm just going to stick that in there for now. Now I'm just going to use some 
PVC conduit clamps I found at Home Depot and uh, some of these coated pocket head screws to hold this in place. They do sell the copper clamps, but uh, for the price of them, I didn't want to buy a bag of 10, so these were really dirt cheap. So let's get that in there. And start these screws. Hold it good. Yeah, one more down here. Okay, so this will be for the hose, and up here will be for the filling the watering can. So now for up here on top, I just, I'm going to put another spigot to fill the cans with and I've got the piece of copper, I cut it a little bit longer than what I wanted and you can see I ran into the pole to help support it. So I'm just going to take a copper tube and cut it here and cut about two inches off of it. That should be just where I want it. Oop, there goes the torch. Before you ever solder anything, you really want to make sure that you take some of this plumber's off and you get all the any dirt or oxidation or anything off to get a good solder joint. And then the meeting fitting that goes on here, you got these little brushes that really clean them out good. And then you use the right soldering paste. This is a uh, no lead solder paste made specifically for the um, the no lead solder so you know make sure you don't get them mixed up so you use the right combination and just get some paste on the mating surfaces there make sure it's fully seated and let's get the dirt out of the end of this torch Oh my god, it fell right in the mud. And let's just solder this fitting on now. It takes a lot of heat to get this dough lead solder. The old 50-50 used to solder easy. And pretty much gets hot and it flows right into the joint. Let's let that cool down a while now. While that's cooling down, I'll just do a quick walk around. I'll do a better one later, but you can see um, pretty much the corn's about six feet high with tassels. Sweet potatoes are doing wonderful. Um, everything else is just really, you know, we're eating zucchinis, we're eating yellow squash, we're eating. Uh, Swiss chard, beets, carrots, uh, string beans will be in. I did have a little problem with the uh, beans. A couple of them got eaten. The other day, a woodchuck decided to climb over that wood pile to get into the garden. I did not know that woodchucks can climb. Well, he's taken care of, so we shouldn't have to worry about him anymore. But you know, you can pretty much see everything's doing really good now. Do an update. We're eating peppers too there. Okay, so I'm guessing this is cool enough to put the valve in. This is just a valve. I put some Teflon tape on there. 
and I'm just going to thread it in here and this is basically just going to be used for filling water cans so you can sit them down and let it run and you know I always like to use two wrenches when I'm tightening stuff like this <clears throat> it sure can be hard sometimes getting things eat where you want them going anywhere and I just put the old hose on here and this is where the hose will be staying and I'll just wrap it up on this hose wrap I will tell you that this black hose that I got um, back when Sears and Roebuck used to be in business um, it is the toughest hose I've ever had. It's a, these hoses are probably 15 years old and they've been out in the sun and stuff and still in wonderful shape. So, um, too bad they went out of business because this stuff was really good. And now I'm just going to try to get this pipe down in, laying down in my trench here. back up to the other part you can see this stuff is quite so now I'm back to the junction of the old hose this is the existing piece coming down and I'm going to trim that off back a little bit. Stuff actually was thinner than the new stuff. And then I got the new here. So I'm just going to cut that to match the end. Get rid of all this. And then these couplings go in there. Actually, I'll put two clamps on there and two clamps on there and then I'll push this coupling in there. And push it in there. Looks like it's just the perfect length. I'm just going to heat it a hair just to get those clamps good and tight. Tight. Okay, so now it went up when I turned on the water and it's time to check for leaks. And Oh my god, this fitting here feels like it's broken. I'll see if I can heat it up tight a little more, but that doesn't look good. And let's go down here. Check everything else. You always want to look for leaks before you bury anything. This one's good. All the solder joints look good. That looks good. No leaks up here. And I just have to get a little piece of hose to put on here for the cans, but... You know, basically, I got a little station here to fill my cans up. And, uh, got my hose there, too, all ready to go. And I tried tightening this up as tight as I could get it, and I cannot get that fitting there to stop leaking. That coupling, um, looks like it's got a little crack in it. I guess I gotta go down to Home Depot and grab another one next time I'm down there. But everything else is good, so, you know, down to just left. The only thing left to do is just bury this, put the dirt back in the hole, and get some mulch over it. So that's pretty much, you know, what I did to bring the water down here. I know some were interested in it, and I think this will make it easier, less, less carrying and stuff. 
you know that old saying you can never have too many clamps well put another couple on there and finally by putting them on there and then cranking them down with a ratchet as hard as I could I did get the leak to stop and uh, looking at the Home Depot reviews for these blue fittings seems as if they are prone to leaking so extra clamps seem to help if you really wank them down all right so it's 90 degrees out here again and uh, I'm done for the day time to go in and uh, take a nap but I will do a garden update in uh, a couple of days oh yeah and before I go in by the garage here I got this cheap uh, wireless four input uh, thermometer from Home Depot a couple days ago and I wanted to try it out so I got the Weber fired up here and we're doing a pork butt on there got that smoking away it's a couple hours I have some nice pulled pork sandwiches and this is the other part where you can read the temperature up to a couple hundred feet away and it's got options for four probes so it does work pretty good what they call a barbecue dragon it's kind of a cheap Chinese one it comes with four probes here are the other two and some grilled great clips and stuff but that it really does seem to be pretty accurate I like it so far so hopefully this answers uh, the question to those who uh, you know I asked how I'm gonna extend the water line down there and this is what I came up with and um, you know it should work out pretty good it's only seasonal and thanks for watching Please subscribe.